Mercury in Libra, the art of the negotiation, diplomacy, mediation, peace treaties, reconciliation, compromise. Hello, my name is Eliane Nicole. I'm your astrologer and tarot reader. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Mercury, the planetary messengers, three week transit through the sign of Libra from September 26 to October 13th. But first, I want to say, if you're watching this on Instagram, I will only post the first five minutes of the video here. The entire video will be available on my YouTube channel, Elian Nicole. My YouTube channel is my name, Elian Nicole, so please find me there. I will post a link in the profile bio at my Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Please hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. Please like, please comment, please share. All of these things help me in the algorithm so I can be in a position to continue to deliver these free astrological offerings. And also, if you happen to be watching on Instagram, please like, please comment, please share. It all helps me in the algorithm, but make sure to go to YouTube where the whole entire video will be posted. And now without further ado, I want to talk about Mercury's three week transit in the sign of Libra, September 26th to October 13th, 2024. And I want to talk about some of the general qualities of Mercury in Libra that always go with a Mercury and Libra transit. And then I want to talk about some of the more specific qualities of Mercury and Libra that are unique to this 2024 transit because of how all of the other position planets are positioned in the sky and how that relates to Mercury's journey. Mercury is very busy during these three weeks and um, you know, this is going to be a very personal transit to you if you are a Gemini rising or a Virgo rising, or if this year Mercury is your time lord by perfection. And if you don't know any of those things, um, you can still listen to this video and get a lot out of it. Just hold tight and listen for the interpretations. If you're interested in learning more about these things, what your rising is and who your chart leader is and who your perfection time lord is for the current year that you're in contact me for a one-on-one -on -one reading it's my joy to read for people and i think astrology works best when you get a reading one-on-one -on -one with an astrologer but in the meantime and in between time i'm going to go over the broad strokes here so Mercury in Libra. Mercury is the planetary messenger. Mercury is the planet of our intellect, how we think, how we listen, how we speak, how we learn. Um, Libra is the, you know, the sign of the scales. Libra is a Venus ruled sign. And uh, so Libra is an air sign, very mental, very social, uh, very verbal and talkative. Um, and um, you know, there's the side of Libra that has to do very much with the arts and the aesthetic, beauty and art. Um, there's a part of Libra that has to do with relationships and marriage, uh, partnerships, uh, creative collaborations. Um, there's the part of Libra, you know, that is very intellectual. Libra loves to read. Um, Libra is the librarian. And then there's the part of Libra that has to do with justice, the scales of justice, what is fair. You know, Libra has to do with the equinox, the balance of the day and night. And so Libra is always seeking and lo looking for that balance in situations. So when Mercury, the sign of our intellect and our mind is in the sign of Libra, Mercury is thinking about, talking about, writing about, all of these Libran themes, you know, art, beauty, relationships, marriage, justice, the law. These are all of the Libra uh, topics and terrain. And so that is very much at 
the top of the collective conversation during this period and we will be hearing those themes come up a lot as a focus in our personal lives and conversations and interactions with others during this three-week period, September 26th to October 13th. Um, so when you're talking about Mercury in Libra, as I started the video with, we're talking a lot about um, you know, diplomacy, negotiation, mediation, peace treaties, um, reconciliation, compromise. The shadow side of Mercury in Libra can be indecision from the endless weighing of options. Um, Libra loves to weigh things on the scales, but sometimes that can go too far and they don't want to make a decision because they can't figure out what's fair. Um, you know, there's a, you know, there can be a vacillating quality to Mercury in Libra. Um, and at worst, with squares in opposition, it can lead to arguments and, and a lot of debating. Uh, so, um, for better or for worse. Anyway, what makes this transit of Mercury in Libra unique is that Mercury's ruler, Venus, happens to be in the sign of Scorpio right now. Venus is considered in her exile or debil debilitated in Scorpio. It's not where the goddess of love and beauty likes to be the most. So Libra's dispositor, which is astrological jar jargon for boss or ruler, happens to be in Scorpio at this time. And so she's ruled by Mars, who's also debilitated in Cancer. And so, and then Mars is being ruled by the moon. So the moon is the ultimate boss of Mercury right now um, because he's the boss of his bosses. <laughs> and if you under, don't understand this chain of command, again, it's something that I can talk about more in a personal one-on-one -on -one reading and it doesn't really matter for you to understand the intricacies of that. I'm just stating it so like people who are students of astrology or who want to know how I'm arriving at my interpretations, like how I'm getting there. It's all very organized. Nothing is arbitrary. It's like deeply embedded philosophical divine organization that leads to what the interpretations are. So I'm saying all of that to say that Anytime something is ruled by the moon, it can be very moody, very fluctuating. And so this is a moody Libra and Mercury ruled by a moody Venus, the goddess of, of love and beauty. Um, and, you know, Mercury in Libra usually likes to be divorced from emotion and to make decisions just based on the, you know, what's fair and the facts. And, um, but there's a lot of emotion involved here. There's some decisions that meet, need to be made and they're being made from an emotional place, more than a place of reason probably during this period. Um, and um, let's see. On the collective scale, we're dealing a lot with issues of law and justice and, you know, Mercury, you know, Venus and Scorpio, who's ruling this Mercury, has a lot to do with things that are coming up from the depths, things that happen behind closed doors, the hidden motivations that, um, you know, cause people to do things, secret relationships, secret alliances. Um, that are happening and Mercury is trying to negotiate all of these situations and make things very fair. Um, as Mercury enters Libra, he's under the rays of the sun, so he's debilitated. He's not as strong in strong of a position as he wants to be to negotiate or to mediate. Um, and yet and still, this is Mercury's objective. Now, what else do I want to say? I, I kind of want to continue to talk about these general qualities 
thank you for bearing with me. You know, I, I don't do a script for these videos. I jot down some notes. I study the astrology and then I just do a channeled re reading, you know, praying to God that what I say is for the highest good of anyone who's, who's listening. But I found when I've tried to do a script, it feels a little too robotic to me and I like to be more natural and it feels more like a true divination when I just kind of study the astrology and make my bullet points and go off the cuff. But yeah, in general, you know, this, this, uh, well, let me talk about some of the aspects, which I did write down. So on a flashcard so that I remember the aspects because the aspects that Mercury makes are what makes this particular Mercury transit unique, Mercury in, in Libra. Um, so as Mercury enters Libra, he's under the rays of the sun, meaning anytime a planet is within 15 degrees of the sun, it's called under the rays of the sun. That means we can't see that planet in the night sky because it's so close to the sun that its light is being drowned out. And as this Mercury enters, it's in an out of sign opposition to Neptune because at the 28th, 29th degree of Virgo, it was at an exact opposition to Neptune, but it's still technically at an out of sign as it enters on September 26th. So there are things that are obscured from view, things that Mercury can't see. There can be some deception. There can be some lies, not always. There can be some illusions, some fantasies. Um, and um, so Mercury is coming into Libra wanting to gain some clarity. And uh, as, as he heads towards the sun, he is getting closer and closer to that moment. And again, this is going to be a particularly personal transit to you if you have a lot of placements in Gemini, especially if you're a Gemini, sun, moon, or rising, or if you have a lot of placements in Libra, of course, um, Aries, because it opposes Libra, and Virgo, because Virgo is also Mercury ruled. Um, and basically the first real aspect that Mercury makes is with the South Node and the South Node is in Libra opposing the North, North Node in Aries. So there is possibly a relationship, partnership, or creative collaboration that Mercury is letting go of in order to or at the same time as aligning with a new direction. And it could be that the relationship is parting ways because there isn't agreement on what the uh, North Star or the um, new direction of the relationship is. It might be because one or both of the partners uh, want to go it alone for a period. Um, but there is a letting go or a releasing or an exit point in relationships. This can be marriages. This can be long-term commitments of any kind in any one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship. It can be a client relationship. It can be a creative collaboration, a working partnership. Um, but there is a letting go and a release point on September 29th and at the same time as Mercury conjoins the south node and opposes the north node that is uh, signaling the exit point or the letting go um, later that evening of the 29th Mercury is forming a sextile with the asteroid goddess Pallas Athene who's in Sagittarius so Mercury has a new vision for the future, a new target that he or she is aiming for. It could be a new relationship that's on the horizon. It could be a new partnership that's on the horizon. 
there's certainly an opportunity opportunity for a new relationship or partnership so it's almost like this letting go this exit point this releasing point is creating the room for something new and more aligned to come in that is going to kind of catapult us more into our future vision and um Mercury aligning with the South Node seems to be very connected to the Mercury Kazemi. The Mercury Kazemi is September 30th. The Kazemi is when Mercury is in the heart of the sun. And Mercury being in the heart of the sun is, you know, Mercury on its chariot. This is an aha moment. This is a moment of clarity around, you know, relationships um, or, um, negotiations, uh, diplomacy in having to do with art, beauty, justice, marriage, you know, um, style, uh, Mercury, I mean, Venus, Libra, all of that has to do with our style, our design. For some people, it might be manifesting more in that way. But, you know, um, Mercury in the heart of the sun is this moment of clarity. And, and so we can be, because of the relationship with the South Node, be getting some clarity on past events, past relationships. Um, and um, yeah, that is the Mercury Kasimi, you know, maybe uh, we're making a decision at this time of how to move forward based on this new understanding, um, this new enlightenment on situations. There may be a reconciliation, repairing of the past, repairing of a relationship. Um, and there might be uh, a peace treaty or an idea of how to compromise and, and make peace going forward. Uh, that maybe we won't actually see until Mercury comes out of the rays of the sun. Possibly, I don't know that for sure, but that's a possibility. Um, the other thing is that Mercury on the first is conjoining Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith, the wild card in the mix. Black Moon Lilith laying in wait in the bushes, waiting to strike like a serpent. Black Moon Lilith is very much involved in the Mercury Sun South Node Kazemi. And she is bringing up some taboo topics. She is bringing up some uncomfortable subjects that nobody wants to talk about, but this is stuff that has to come out. This can be secrets coming out. This can be hidden desires that are surfacing. Um, this can be feelings of, uh, you know, betrayal rejection, um, you know, dark desires. Uh, these are the things that Lilith is bringing up uh, and she wants this stuff to come up and be talked about, be negotiated, be accounted for in the karmic balance of relationships. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's that. I almost forgot about Lilith. But she is definitely present in this energy. Um, and this is at the same degree as the solar eclipse. It's coming October 2nd. And I will be going deeper into these topics in my solar eclipse video. You know, all of these transits are like waves coming in on the beach of our lives. One wave coming over the next, creating and describing the entire landscape. So I encourage you to watch all of the videos. Like if you haven't already, watch my Venus and Scorpio video because that informs what's going on with 
the boss of this Mercury retrograde transit and watch my Mars into Cancer video that I posted because that informs both what's happening with Venus and Scorpio as well as this Mercury in Libra transit. These are all of the cosmic waves that are collapsing onto each other, creating the complete landscape, or not creating, but reflecting the create landscape of what we're dealing with here on planet Earth. And yes, astrologers don't believe that the planets are creating or causing what's happening. We're saying that the planets are reflecting. They're signaling what's happening. They're like a mirror in the sky reflecting back to us what's happening here on planet Earth. So, oh my gosh, I just realized I didn't put my earrings in. Whoa. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I might re-record this whole video because of that. <laughs> um, so on October 2nd, Mercury is forming a square with Ceres, who is in Capricorn. And Ceres in Capricorn is one of the asteroid goddess and Ceres has to do with how we nourish ourselves. She has to do with how we nourish ourselves either metaphorically or um, literally. So it can have to do with issues of food. Mercury in a square or Mercury, yeah, in a square with Ceres. Um, you know, there can be a conflict or challenge around diet, food, what we're eating. There can be a conflict or a challenge in something that we are trying to negotiate um, with a parental figure, parents or mothers. Um, sometimes this has to do with difficulties or challenge in custody issues. Um, this is happening at the same time as the solar eclipse. So it very much signals that there is going to have to be like, or that there will be a turbo, uh, completely new start around these topics because of the conflict or challenge that is coming up on October 5th. Uh, Mercury in Libra will be squaring Mars in Cancer. And this is right as Mars is going into pre-shadow. Mars goes into pre-shadow on October 4th. And so Mercury's conflict or challenge with Mars, Mars is in Cancer. Again, this can be around family issues. Um, these tend to be of an emotional nature. They can have to do with privacy, security, safety. Mars and Cancer is the mama bear trying to protect her young. Um, potential, potentially, um, Mercury and Libra can literally have to do with the law, legal issues, issues of what's fair. It can have to do with a mediation or negotiation around the family and a conflict that Mercury is in with Mars. This is the same time as Mars is in a trine with Saturn and Venus. So this is an, an issue that's involving possibly several different parties and it has to do with relationships and families, um, the law, elders, spiritual beliefs. Um, and um, it can be a complicated issue, but there's definitely, um, this negotiation is something that we are going to probably come back to just because Mercury is in pre-shadow and will be coming back to this point at the end of its retrograde. So more to come on that issue. On October 7th, Mercury in Libra will be conjoining Juno in Libra. So this might be where um, the new relationship officially begins. This looks like the making of a commitment um, in art or around love or beauty or justice or law. This could be the forming of a new creative collaboration. This can be um, a proposal, an engagement. This can be the date of a marriage. 
Um, and it doesn't just have to be romantic. It can be in business or creativity as well. Um, on October 8th, Mercury is forming a trine with Jupiter. This looks like really good news. This looks like harmony in relationships. This looks like expansion um, around relationships of, you know, a, a beautiful exchange of ideas. Um, again, beautiful for creative collaborations. Um, and this is happening as Jupiter is coming into a standstill and wanting and about to go retrograde. So Jupiter is, um, you know, sharing all of these great um, ideas and concepts with Libra, um, Mercury and Libra. And then there may be a period of going inside to further develop, going more internal to further develop these ideas. Um, and at the same time, Mercury is forming an opposition with Chiron and Aries. So there is a sense of um, needing to address a wound of some kind, whether that's actually talking to a doctor about a physical wound or a therapist about a more emotional kind of wound. Um, it could be talking to a mentor, but a, it's it seems to be um, getting some, you know, an opposition. So there can be an impasse or a line in the sand being drawn that needs to be addressed with a doctor or a therapist or a mentor of some kind. Um, it could be that, uh, you know, there's a situation that will be calling for an apology or an amends to be made. Um, you know, Mercury opposing Chiron can manifest in many different ways. I just listed a few of them. And then finally on October 13th, Mercury at the 29th degree of Libra squares Pluto. This is difficult. This is the dark side of Mercury. Um, you know, this can some, you know, be um, arguments, debates. This can be coming into a conflict with a underworld figure. This can be um, power struggles um, and uh, arguments. Um, this can be the law coming down in a difficult way uh, in terms of a negotiation or mediation around relationships or art or beauty or justice. Um, this is a difficult conversation, a difficult negotiation uh, for Mercury as he leaves the sign of Libra. So, that is my interpretation of Mercury traveling through the sign of Libra. I uh, encourage you to contact me for a one-on-one -on -one reading if you wanna see specifically how the Mercury and Libra journey is interacting with your own chart. We can look at the house Libra rules in your chart um, and how it affects your personal planets. I gave the general overview, but this is going to be different from person to person, depending on their own astrological coding. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I might record this video again because I'm mortified that I didn't put my earrings on. I feel naked without my earrings. My name is Eliana Nicole. I'm your astrologer and tarot reader. Oh, and I will pick a card from my dolly deck and see what the dollies have to say about mercury and libra i haven't been using tarot in my readings too lately um, ah the two of cups a new relationship i love it thank you for joining me have a wonderful mercury and libra and stay tuned for my forthcoming solar eclipse in Libra video. A very exciting solar eclipse coming up soon. Thank you.